Caitlin, congratulations on being Rookie uh, of the Year yeah. for the WNBA. What an amazing accomplishment. Who would have thought that all those years ago back in Des Moines, Iowa, that this would be the case right now. Thought, we coach. knew what we had in Caitlin back in Iowa City, and we knew the attention that she was bringing around the Big Ten and the collegiate basketball. But I didn't know how that was going to transcend into the WNBA. And obviously we can see that it's done pretty darn well, and people are excited to see her play at every level. You've worked for it. You deserve it. It's an incredible honor, and we are so proud of you always. Aww. Go Hawks. That's so cute. Thanks, Coach. You're the best. So cute. Caitlin Clark was amazed and thankful when Coach Lisa Bluter praised her for winning Rookie of the Year, acknowledging her hard work and talent. Clark also received special praise from Cheryl Swoops after being named WNBA Rookie of the Year, getting 66 out of 67 votes. A near-unanimous victory came for the Indiana Fever star after gripping the nation in her first professional season, though not everyone was expecting her immediate success out of the University of Iowa. I think what Caitlin has done for not just college basketball, but for women's basketball, period, I think has been great. The following, people watching the game, sellouts that we haven't seen ever. It just really bothers me, though, when, when people just take bits and pieces of what they want to take, and they don't listen to everything, and you don't hear everything. It wasn't personal. One, it was my opinion on how I think she'll be at the next level, because I do remember me saying that Caitlin, to me, could be the best college shooter I've ever seen. When you put these expectations on these young women in college to go to the next level and be immediately dominant, and when that doesn't happen, then people come back and say, oh, she was a bust, she yep. was a flop, she wasn't yep. that good. Just let them do what they're doing in college, enjoy what they're doing in college, and let them become stars in the WNBA. Swoops, a four-time WNBA champion and three-time MVP, first raised eyebrows regarding Clark in March when she claimed that the Iowa native's NCAA D1 scoring record wasn't legitimate because she was a 25-year-old player in her fifth year. The 53-year-old was speaking in hyperbole, Clark was 22, and in her fourth year at Iowa. But Swoops was unimpressed because the budding superstar was taking about 40 shots a game. In August, Swoops did not even mention Clark when gushing over the Fever's strong post-Olympics form. I think the Olympic break really helped Indiana, she said on the Queens of the Court podcast. I'm going to shout out to Lexi Hall. I'm a big Lexi Hall fan. Lexi Hall shot the leather off the ball in their game against Seattle. Kelsey Mitchell is just stroking. She's just shooting the basketball. Aaliyah Boston, almost a triple-double. If Indiana continues to play the way they're playing, like this, they too are going to move up in the standings. That was despite Clark going on average 19.2 points, 8.4 rebounds, 5.7 assists, and 1.3 steals while shooting 41.7% for the field for the season on her way to being crowned the league's top rookie. And it appears that despite bouncing out of the playoffs in the first round to the Connecticut Sun, Clark has managed to win over swoops with a rare piece of praise. I just thought what Caitlin was able to do coming into the league this season, she was just crazy, Swoops admitted. Just shooting the basketball, her ability to put the ball where it needs to be when it needed to be there. I think Angel will eventually be a good pro. I don't think Angel will come into the league immediately and dominate the way people think she will. And I say that for people who have never watched a WNBA game. It's good. Like there's talent, like these women can play. And because there are very few roster spots, like it's a real job. Mm -hmm. So people look at new players coming in, whether that's out of college, players who've been overseas, mm -hmm. and they look at that and say, oh, you trying to come take my job. Like, no, nah, it's not going to be that easy. So will Caitlin Clark be a good pro? Absolutely. Will Caitlin Clark come into the WNBA? and do what she's doing right now. Immediately, absolutely not. Not gonna happen. Okay, not on the right team. Just last month, Swoops played down the suggestion that Clark had been dominating the league, but has now gone back on those words and her previous criticism, aligning herself with Rookie of the Year voters. Let's see what Dan Dockich said. The women of the WNBA, I mean, they're driving me bat blank crazy because, well, 
They won't shut up. It's like drama after drama, and I guess it's smart. I don't know. The latest, Cheryl Swoops, who seems to be the village idiot and keeps talking and talking, and I didn't even know Cheryl Swoops still existed until, you know, she started talking and talking and talking negatively about Caitlin Clark. Well, she says nobody on the fever want to play with Caitlin Clark. Yeah, I got two words for you. My ass. Dan is right. Swoops had a serious problem with Clark. One thing about women, they will sever a relationship quick. But the fact that the relationship was severed because there was a difference in opinion, that's unfortunate. You know, I have a lot of stuff, so I might mispronounce someone. I'm trying to correct it. Right. If somebody tries to correct me and I sever a relationship or I'm no longer on speaking terms, we never had a friendship to begin with. To begin with, right. Caitlin Clark is a polarizing figure. People gravitate towards her. It's okay. Caitlin Clark's success doesn't diminish what Cheryl Swoops accomplished. Caitlin Clark's arrival doesn't diminish anything that they've done. I don't get this old guard. People wasn't phonetic. It wasn't buzzing. The WNBA and they people didn't talk about it like they do. Instead of being upset about it, I'm a ride the wave. Right. Look, I love Cheryl Swoop, but I don't think Nancy said anything that's wrong. Cheryl, you just got, you, you know, your facts are off. However, it may be some time before supporters get to see Clark back out on the court. Clark and the Fever currently lead the WNBA in average game attendance and per game TV viewership. But despite the attendance and viewership records, there seems to be some haterade in the league in regards to Clark starting with WNBA legend Cheryl Swoops herself. Steven After years of nonstop basketball, Clark is taking some time away from the sport during the offseason. There had been hope that she would join the likes of Angel Reese and compete in the three-on-three -three unrivaled league co-founded by WNBA stars Brianna Stewart and Nafisa Colliers. But instead, Clark is taking a break and playing golf in her downtime. Say to yourself, damn, what is going on here? This is bad. This is very, Stephen very bad. Caitlin Clark is clearly a catalyst for a business that was, and let's be honest, Caitlin to some degree financially saved the WNBA. It was hemorrhaging money for years. It's actually to, to drive revenue so we can give the players extra income after opportunities. I had to actually educate the players. They're like, good, 75 million divided by 140. Caitlin Clark's arrival in the WNBA has been nothing short of spectacular. The former Iowa star has transformed the league, bringing in new fans and boosting ratings. But with her early exit from the playoffs, questions are starting to emerge about the league's future. On the court. Because at the end of the day, with her WNBA rookie season complete, let's see it. Most points by a point guard in a season in WNBA history. Most double doubles by a rookie guard in WNBA history. Most points by a rookie in WNBA history. Most assists by a rookie in the history of the WNBA. When Clark joined the Indiana Fever, things changed fast. The team went from having the lowest attendance to the highest, with an average of 17,000 fans per game. That's a huge jump from just 4,200 the year before. Other teams even had to move their games against the Fever to bigger arenas to fit all the fans. Straight game for the Fever with 40 or more points in the paint. That would be basket 44, courtesy of Caitlin Clark's 13th assist, just reading the defense so well. Power block by Paul. TV ratings shot up too. Clark's first WNBA game was the most watched in 23 years, with 2.2 million viewers. Overall, WNBA games on ESPN saw a 170% increase in viewers compared to last season. This led to a massive new TV deal worth $2.2 billion. You have to scale, and ultimately expansion had always been on my list. But we didn't want to rush into it because we wanted new owners, like new ownership groups. Anyone who knows sports here knows, like, it's a slog to be a sports. But here's where things get tricky. When Clark and the Fever were knocked out of the playoffs early, the WNBA felt it hard. Attendance at later playoff games dropped a lot. TV ratings for games without Clark fell by over 60%, from 2.5 million viewers to just 929,000. 
She struggled with physical defense she's faced at the professional level and voiced frustration with the league's officiating, recently telling reporters, quote, I feel like I'm getting hammered and everybody is physical with me and opponents get away with things that other people don't get away with. That's what Caitlin Clark said. But I am upset. About this drop off has raised some eyebrows. How can the league keep growing if its biggest star isn't playing? Some people are starting to wonder if the WNBA might try to make sure Clark reaches the finals next season. Stephen A. Smith, a well-known sports commentator, said, You've got to wonder if the WNBA can really afford to lose Clark early again next year. Don't be shocked if there are some questionable calls or advantageous matchups that push her toward the finals. Skip Bayless, another sports personality, added, The league knows Clark is their golden ticket. Without her, they're going to struggle, so why wouldn't they do everything in their power to keep her in the spotlight? It's not unheard of for sports leagues to be accused of favoring star players or big market teams. The NBA has faced similar accusations with players like LeBron James. The NFL has been questioned about favoring certain teams in big games to boost ratings. While some might worry about the WNBA favoring Clark, it's important to remember that star power often drives a league's success. If the WNBA finds ways to showcase Clark's talents, it could be a game changer for women's basketball. Think about how the NBA soared to new heights with Michael Jordan and LeBron James. Their stardom brought in millions of new fans and massive revenue. The WNBA might be looking at a similar opportunity with Caitlin Clark. Sure, diehard fans care about fairness, but most casual viewers tune in to see amazing performances from star players. If Clark is leading her team to the finals and breaking records, that's going to attract way more attention than a perfectly balanced league where no one stands out. By putting Clark in the spotlight, the WNBA could grow its overall audience. This increased attention could benefit all players in the long run. As long as the games themselves aren't rigged, a little extra publicity for their brightest star might be just what the WNBA needs to reach the next level. WNBA Commissioner Kathy Engelbert has tried to address these concerns. She's called Clark a transformative figure, but also said, The WNBA is bigger than any one player. Whether that's true or not is something we'll have to wait and see. Well, let me clarify first, because no pro it's proxy season, right? No CEO do you just put the base pay in there. You put their bonus, you put their stock options, you put everything. Caitlin has the ability to make up to five hundred, uh, half a million dollars just in WNBA wages this year. So, of course, they're just looking at a base which is collectively bargained. And actually, it's low because she, she's a number one pick. She'll make a little more than that. But you got to build, you have to scale. And ultimately, expansion had always been on my list, but we didn't want to rush into it because we wanted new owners, like new ownership groups. Anyone who knows sports here knows, like, it's a slog to be a sports owner. It's actually to, to drive revenue so we can give the players extra income after opportunities. I had to actually educate the players. They're like, good, $75 million divided by 144 pay us. As Clark gets ready for her second season, all eyes will be on her and the Indiana Fever. Will she lead her team to new heights? Or will the league face the same problems if she's knocked out of the playoffs early again? One thing's for sure, Caitlin Clark's success is crucial for the WNBA's growth. How the league handles this pressure will shape its future. So, what do you think? Is the WNBA setting up Caitlin Clark for a final win to save the league? Or will they let the games play out naturally and let her earn a championship on her own? Let us know what you think in the comments. This situation raises some big questions about sports, fairness, and the power of star players. It's not just about Caitlin Clark or the WNBA. It's about how leagues balance the need for exciting, marketable stars with the integrity of the game. The WNBA is at a crossroads. They have a chance to capitalize on Caitlin Clark's popularity and potentially reach